This all happened when I was 12 years old. It was a Sunday night. Me and my siblings along with my cousin went to watch Sicario. It was all going well, watching the movie and just goofing around. The theater wasn't packed as it was a Sunday. As I had came in to sit down, I stepped on a plastic nacho tray. That part will play out a little later. A guy with his hoodie on was seated two rows right in front of us. After a while, I had went to the bathroom by myself. I go to the urinal and start my business. Out of nowhere, a man about 5'6 to 5'7 comes up right behind me. I mean, like, I can literally feel him right on my back while I'm still doing my business. He starts talking and he tells me about how we're being really loud in a low aggressive tone. I figured that when I had stepped on the nacho tray, that was the last straw for him. I tell him I'm sorry and he goes on to tell me that he's going to have the movie theater workers kick me out since I was underage at the time and that the movie was rated R. Through all of this happening, I'm still turned around. I finally turn around face to face with him and he had the most red eyes that I've ever seen to this day. They were bloodshot red. He leaves and I run to tell my sister who actually worked at the movie theater at the time, but it was on her day off. We tell the movie theater workers and they go check it out, but the guy is gone by now. Today I just kind of laugh it off, but I never want to go through something like that again. The way he came up behind me like that, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just really disturbing. Well anyways, I guess I'm really lucky nothing else happened but it was still a pretty terrifying experience for a 12 year old. If you happen to think this story isn't that scary, just keep that in mind. Before I tell this story, let me say that this happened a super long time ago, so my memory might be a bit twitchy, and there's probably more details I'm missing out on. One day, my brother and my friends and I for the sake of a story who we'll call Evan and Tom, went to the mall to go see a movie for his birthday. The mall had a built-in movie theater. I don't know if they do that at all malls or just this one, but we were going to see the new Godzilla movie. Before the movie, we would walk around the mall trying to buy stuff, but we were a bunch of broke teenagers and we didn't really have a lot of money. We're just walking around when this dirty looking lady starts elbowing my friend Tom. Now, my friend Tom is very tall, and he looks a lot older than he is, so we thought it was kind of weird, but we aren't really in the best area, so stuff like this kind of happens often. Now, we go down an escalator to get to the movie theater part, when we then see the lady with one of her friends. They have dirty skin, messed up teeth, and look sort of... How do I word this? Homeless? They then spot us, and are like... Oh, you guys are so cute. Can we get your phone numbers? And we're just like, um, no. And keep on moving. We watched our movie, and it ended after about two and a half hours. It really wasn't that good, to be honest. So after the movie, my friend Evan has a little bit of money, and he wants to go buy some game for his PlayStation. Also, by this time in the story, Tom has gone home. We're now going down the escalator, when the weird lady from before comes down, literally shoving people out of the way, and walks up to us and actually asks us if we'll give her a piggyback ride. I'm not even kidding. We both just look at each other and are like, what the hell? And just ignored her. My friend Evan got back and he got his game, and he called his mom to pick us up, and she started heading our way. Evan's mom arrives and she's outside, and my brother Evan and I get in the car, and we turn around and the weird lady is still staring right at us. We even told Evan's mom all about what happened and she thought it was weird too. Our thoughts are one, she was just pulling some kind of prank on us and just messing around. Or two, she was some kind of drug addict and was possibly under the influence and maybe that's why she was being so bizarre. I don't really know. What I do know is when you're at the movies with your friends and some weird ass woman won't leave you alone, it starts to get pretty creepy after a while. Anyways, we're really glad that nothing else happened beyond that.
This is going to be a pretty short story, but it was still creepy nonetheless. I listen to these creepy stories all the time, and I thought I would never have to share my own before. But here I am. My name is Chris, and I'm a 24-year-old guy living in Northern Virginia. Say what you want, but I live with my parents and my 9-year-old younger brother named Abe, because I want to save costs on rent and stuff. Since my parents don't expect me to pay rent, I help them out by babysitting Abe, which just basically includes taking him out for lunch on occasion to also doing stuff with him during the weekends. Not really the best situation for a guy my age to be in, but whatever. So one day I told Abe that I was going to take him to the movies. I think we were going to watch the new Death on the Nile movie that was out. I know it was rated PG-13, but whatever. At this point, Abe has seen the Avenger movies and the Suicide Squad movies as well, so I didn't really think it mattered that much. So I parked the car and we get ready to walk to the movie theater building. To get to the movie theater building, you have to walk up a small flight of stairs at this plaza. So as I was walking towards the top of the stairs, I get a weird vibe, so I look up. Staring back at me was this giant man over six feet tall. He wore a prominent red jacket, and he had a disheveled looking gray beard and hair. I was creeped out at first, but I just wanted to break the awkward tension. So I said to the guy, Hey man, how's it going? And then quickly tried to walk past him with Abe. I was trying to rush Abe into the movie theater building by saying, Let's go to the movies quickly now. We don't want to miss it. So in the movie theater building, there's two escalators until you get to the main floor, where the ticket machines are with some of the employees out front helping people out. I just wanted to take Abe there as quickly as possible. As I rushed Abe into the building, I took a quick glance behind me, and to my absolute horror, there was the giant man with the red jacket from earlier. I quickly rushed Abe to the escalator to try and get to the main ticket floor quickly. The man got on the escalator too. I glance sideways, and I see that the man was literally one step behind us on the escalator, but the thing that made me shiver the most was the man's quiet, creepy laugh. He was practically doing a combination of coughing and giggling really creepily. It literally sent shivers down my spine. After another glance behind me, I also noticed a brown bag with a bottle that the man was holding on to, so I was assuming he was drunk as well. Not knowing what else was going to happen, as we finished slowing down going up the first escalator, I quickly got Abe and went to the second escalator, and the man still followed us. I got freaked out, but to not freak Abe out, I told him we're going to do a mini exercise and then power walk up the escalator. Once we got to the floor where the other employees were, I quickly took Abe and then ran towards the ticket machines. In my side view, I noticed when the man got to the ticket floor as well, and he looked at us and then went back down the escalators. After I watched the movie with Abe, thankfully the man was nowhere to be seen. I know that Abe and I weren't harmed in this scenario, but I want you to just picture all this happening for yourselves. Imagine how you would react if a giant man that was standing at a plaza was staring at you and your little sibling, or even your child, then suddenly follows you closely inside the building while creepily giggling behind you. My God. That really was the scariest experience I've ever had with another human being in my life. This happened when I was 11 years old. I know it was right around then because I was with my little brother at our nearest $2 theater seeing the new Avatar movie when it had just come out a few months earlier in 2010. It was in the middle of this little shopping area surrounded by stores. My mom had dropped me off with my little brother Jake, who had just turned four at the time. I think my twin Cass had gone to a friend's birthday party sleepover, which is why I was alone with Jake. My mother was supposed to only be in one of the stores immediately around the theater, but evidently she didn't anticipate just how long the movie was going to be, and I definitely didn't have a phone back then, so she had no way of contacting me, or I her. Anyway. I leave the theater carrying Jake, though he could walk if he wanted to. The $2 theater was never super busy, so there was only about six people or so leaving the theater the same time as us. As I stepped out of the theater, I noted my mother's falling apart red minivan was nowhere in sight. This immediately made me uncomfortable, but I also wasn't super surprised. 
At first, we sat on a bench right outside the theater, just waiting, while Jake kept talking about how cool the blue people were with their flying dinosaurs and how he wanted one. But after over half an hour of waiting, a worried employee came out and asked if we were okay and if we needed her to call someone. My mother didn't have a cell phone either, so that was pretty unhelpful, but I knew better than to act like I needed help. I shoot Jake a look to keep quiet, and he obeys. If she called the police, my mother would kill me. She always told us that if we thought growing up with her was bad, wait until we're put into foster care and split apart. So she'd just say if we ever left her, she'd kill herself, which I fully believed. So I just smiled politely at the worried theater employee and told her that our mom would be there any minute to pick us up. I knew that we couldn't just stay and sit there now, so I then told Jake that we needed to start walking home, which looking back, really wasn't my best idea. The theater was almost a half an hour drive away from my house. It would have taken me well past dark to get home by myself, and even longer still having to carry a chunky four-year-old, especially with how small I was for my age. But I had Jake to look after, and I was super protective of him, so I was on high alert as soon as we began walking. We crossed the street on the crosswalk and began making the long trip towards our house down the sidewalk, with Jake on the inner side of me so if anything happened he wouldn't be hit by a car. He waddled alongside me for a while, but we hadn't even made it completely out of eyesight of the shopping center when a small black car pulled over and a middle-aged man with thinning hair and dark eyes then smiled and waved to me like he knew me. Hello there, he says cheerfully, and I back up, still ridiculously shy, and mumble a polite, hi, in return. What is a precious young lady like you doing out here walking? Is that your son? Now, keep in mind, I'm like 11 years old at this point, and I looked even younger than that. I was still completely a skinny child in appearance and definitely didn't look old enough to be Jake's mother by any stretch of the imagination. I laugh awkwardly. Oh no, this is my little brother. We're just heading home, thank you. And with that, I picked up Jake who had taken to hiding behind me and began walking again. But he didn't drive off. He slowly continues to pull up next to me, following my pace. Come on, let me give you a ride. It's way too hot out here for you to be walking with your brother. We can stop for ice cream to cool you down. My treat. He smiles again widely, and I just shake my head. I can't. My mom will probably pick us up on the way. She should be here any minute now, really. But thank you again. I was still trying to be polite as possible to get him to go away, but he continued to creep by though I still didn't see him as a threat at all, just a nuisance. I suddenly look around and I can't help but notice how unpopulated the area is. Oh, your mom? I know her. She's actually the one who called me. She told me to pick you two up and take you home. And with that, my fear finally kicked in. Now, my mother was the epitome of irresponsible, but she would never, and I mean ever, send a stranger to pick us up like this. Jake remained uncharacteristically quiet, turning his head away from the man and beginning to cry, tugging on my sleeve without saying anything. And I don't know why I decided to say something so stupid, but I did. Listen, mister, you already asked me if my brother was my son, so you obviously don't know my mom. Please leave us alone. We're fine. And that's when the huge smile instantly disappears from his face. All right, look, get in the fucking car. He then says in a deadly serious tone, all joy completely gone. I instinctively take a step back. My mouth drops open, but no words seem to escape. Then he raises his voice. I said now, young lady, get in the fucking car. And before I can even respond or decide what to do, there's a loud blaring car horn that takes both of our attention. I never thought I'd be so excited to see my mom's ratty minivan again. I had been so entranced with fear with this conversation that I hadn't even noticed my mother pull up behind him, still blaring her horn. She looked so angry. I stick up my middle finger to the guy and then run to my mom's car. She stops blaring the horn in time for me to hear her tire squeal as he then hits the gas and drives away, like a bat out of hell. I turn to Jake and he's following my lead, 
flipping off the man as he drives away. I begin to cry and smile at Jake, giving him a high five for being so brave. I shakily walk into my mom's van and buckle Jake into his seat, feeling like I'm about to vomit as the adrenaline finally takes control. My mother just yells at me the entire way home, telling me how stupid I was to try and walk home and that I should have just waited for her. I start sobbing and I ask where she was, and she says that the movie was so long she decided to drive down the street to go grocery shopping at Walmart. I try to explain to her what the man was saying, thinking it might make her less mad at me, but she snubs it, telling me that he was just a concerned adult who saw two kids on the side of the road and he was just trying to help. It wasn't until I was near 15 when the story got brought up again, and my mom who was drinking immediately got a guilty smile on her face and actually admitted that she knew I was telling the truth, that the man had clearly been up to no good. She explained that's why she blasted the horn at him, so he wouldn't try to do anything, and that given the way he flew out of there, it was incriminating enough. She continued, claiming that she didn't tell me because she didn't want me to grow up being overly paranoid and thinking that I was all that, which is really ironic given all of the crazy situations and stories to come. So gee, thanks mom. Way to save the day and still manage to be a pretty crummy mom. Hey everyone, apologies for the brief interruption on the stories. But I want to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's episode. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients right to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week, so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long lines, and ensuring you don't waste any money on excess food. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order online, or even in the app. Change your delivery day, food preference, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. What I love about HelloFresh personally is just how much time it saves me in the kitchen, especially on nights when I get home from the gym and I don't feel like cooking. HelloFresh makes it easy and saves me so much time on meal prep. Go to HelloFresh.com dinner16 and use code DINNER16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Dinner16 and use code Dinner16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. When I was 18 years old, I had got a job at my local university. For reference, I'm a woman and now 31. After about a year of working there, a new guy had started. His name was Corey and at the time he was 24. Corey was a goth guy who wore trench coats to work and painted his nails black. He had a really mysterious vibe about him. I on the other hand was a fresh out of cosmetology school 18 year old fashionista. I don't know what it was about Corey, but he interested me. Not romantically, but I was really interested in getting to know him as a friend. I will say that this experience still follows me around to this day. I was very social when I was a young woman. I used to strike up conversations with anyone anywhere. Little did I know that I'd probably regret this day for the rest of my life. It was my lunch break at university and I saw Corey had an empty seat next to him so I took it upon myself to sit next to him. We chatted for the 30 minute break and then exchanged numbers. As soon as I was back on my shift, my phone vibrates. It was Corey asking me if I'd like to go see a movie with him later that night. I actually had plans with another friend that night, but I figured we could all just go together. I said yes, and because Corey didn't have a car, I told him I'd pick him up at 8 p.m. that evening. When my friend CJ and I showed up to Corey's house, he came out wearing a black trench coat, nails freshly painted, and this time, unlike his work attire, he had a full face of makeup. Since I didn't really know Corey all that well, I figured that maybe he might be gay, which was fine by me. I loved the scene, and my older brother was also gay, so it made me feel comfortable with him. This assumption dissolved quickly when I realized he was walking towards the car holding a rose. My friend made a comment. I didn't know this was a date. 
I didn't know this was a date either, I said. I then immediately wondered what I could have done to give him this impression. When he got in the car, he seemed annoyed that my friend was tagging along. During the movie, I sat in between my friend and Corey. Corey kept trying to hold my hand during the movie. I kept trying to use my hand to slowly eat popcorn, just to avoid the awkward situation I had gotten myself in. I felt really relieved when my friend and I had finally taken Corey home. When I got home, I felt relieved, and I decided I better back off and keep my distance with Corey at work. That evening, he had texted me saying what a wonderful evening he had. I didn't respond. The next morning, I got up for work. I left pretty early in the morning as I had to start at 5 a.m. When I left my front porch, I was stunned to see Corey standing right by my car. He said that he was up all night and he couldn't sleep, so he decided to take a walk and ended up at my house. Then he asked if he could catch a ride to work with me. I was really bothered by this. I only mentioned to Corey the street that I lived on while we were chatting having lunch that one time. He must have walked down my street looking for my car. Also, I should add that he probably lived a walking distance of about one hour away from me. This made me so uncomfortable, but I felt like I had to since he was already there and we were going the same place. When we got to work, I told my older coworker about what had happened. She told me to be careful and also said that maybe I should talk to the police. I thought that was a bit too much though, and I didn't really feel like it was a police matter. After this, I tried really hard to never make eye contact with Corey at work and didn't respond to his text messages. This made Corey very upset. He started drunk dialing me late at night and another morning as I'm leaving for work, he showed up at my house drunk, confessing his love for me and actually tried kissing me on my porch. Eventually, I got a job at a salon doing hair part-time. I still kept my university job in the meantime though. I was so excited to be doing hair that I started giving my coworkers at university my business card that my new job had made for me. Well, somehow Corey got a hold of one. The salon I worked at was in a big shopping mall. One day my friend Gloria came in to say hi to me. We were about to close, but I had plans with her that night, so she was coming home with me. She mentioned that she had been seeing this weird guy with a giant stuffed animal the size of himself sitting out by the smoking bench when she came in. I thought, oh, that's kind of weird. When we pulled up to my house, to Gloria and my shock, the giant stuffed animal she saw that day was now on my porch. Corey must have seen me leaving with a friend and decided to just drop it off on the porch for me. I was so embarrassed and also sick to my stomach at this point. Gloria stayed the night with me that night, but the whole evening I had so much anxiety about this. Over the next few weeks, I avoided Corey at work like the plague. I also ignored his repeated phone calls and text messages. One night I was just getting to sleep when I then heard my bedroom door open. It was Corey. He had used a credit card to open my front door and actually sneak into my house. I flew out of my bed and then screamed at him. He then started crying and he asked me why I was ignoring him. I screamed for my roommate at the time to come help me. She then came running in and she told him to leave. She was a fiery Latina, very scary when she wanted to be. I ended up calling the police and getting him charged with trespassing and breaking and entering. Corey was in jail for three months for this. I wish I could say the story ended here, but it doesn't. I had signed up for Vine, which back then was a service that you texted whenever you had an offender that was released. I remember that day when I would got the message that Corey was going to be released. I thought to myself that there's no way he's going to bother me again. After all, I had put him in jail. I had plans with my friend CJ to pick me up later that evening. CJ was aware that Corey was getting out that day and also knew what time that we had planned to hang out. I was getting ready upstairs in my room, eating a bit of pizza, and Corey then burst into my room. He had broken into my home yet again, but this time my roommate wasn't home. I was terrified. The next two hours, I was held hostage by this sociopath. I need to provide a trigger warning for sexual assault. Corey got physically and sexually violent with me. I won't go into much detail, but 
it was the worst experience of my life. I really thought that I'd never make it out of my room. Two hours into my awful ordeal, my friend CJ and three of his friends then burst into my door. They saved me that day. They pulled Corey out of my room, then dragged him outside and beat the fuck out of him in my parking lot. More legal issues came for Corey after that, and more prison time. I was never able to feel safe in that house again, and shortly after, I moved. I'm now a married woman, and I live in another state. But to this day, Corey still sends me messages on Facebook, confessing his love and trying to apologize for what he did to me all those years ago. I block all his accounts, but he just makes new ones. My husband has been aware of Corey and all the drama that ensued the last 15 years or so, as he was also a friend back then. I still always cringe whenever Facebook notifies me I have a new message request. I hate it.